Hello folks, it's Professor Fiore, and today we're going to look at the resistor color code. Shouts from the audience. All right, the standard color code is either a three or four band color code. We took a look at a simple resistor. Two leads. You would have band number one, band number two, band number three, nice and close, and then possibly uh, another band all by itself over here. You might have, for a higher precision resistor, four bands tied together over here. And a fifth band out there. So let's start with this one. This is standard for 20%, uh, 10%, and 5%. These guys, this is precision. So we're talking 1% or tighter. First thing we have to understand is sort of the way this is structured. The first two, or in this case, the first three are going to give us the precision digits. And then the last one, this third or fourth, will tell us the power of 10 associated with it. And the very last one, the one that's separated over here, four and five, will tell us what the tolerance bands are. So we need to know what the colors uh, represent numerically. So this just goes like so. Zero, black. And we just kind of follow the rainbow here. Well, except for the black and brown. That's not really part of the rainbow unless it's night, right? Don't see a lot of rainbows at night, though, because you do need light. Okay, so right, other than these extremes, black, brown, and gray, and white, it's essentially a rainbow here. If you took a physics course, you might have heard of you know, Roy G. Biv. The way to remember this, red, orange, yellow, G, B. They would throw in an indigo here, violet. It's just too hard to tell the difference between indigo and violet when you're looking at a color code. So we just kind of skip over that. So here's the way it works. We might have a resistor with the following sort of colors. Oh, and look at this. We have color code. So let's say we got a brown first band, and then a red next band. So we have orange. Looks a little on the red side, but close enough. And maybe I don't have a final band. I'm gonna put this in kind of like ghosted. All right, so this band is always your tolerance band. Now, I don't have colors for this, but here's the way it works. If there's no band, That's plus or minus 20%. Those aren't very common anymore. If it's silver, it's plus or minus 10%. If it's gold, plus or minus 5%. So, if this is exactly what we have, brown, red, orange, what is this equivalent to? Well, brown is one. Red is two, 
orange is 3. So is this 123 ohms? No, it's not. The 3 is a power of 10. In other words, this literally means 10 to the third or three zeros. So you're saying it's one, two, zero, zero, zero. In other words, this is 12K ohms, right? If there's no band, then it's 20%. If we had, uh, let's just say we had a silver band over here. I don't have anything that would do silver, but let's say it's silver. So that's plus or minus 10%. In other words, 10% of one point, excuse me, of 12K is 1.2K. So what we're saying is the legal range of values would be 12K plus or minus 1.2K. So if I go to a bin and I start pulling resistors out, they could be as high as 13.2K and as low as 10.8K. Right? So those are all legal. We would hope they would all be 12K, but you know, that's just not the case, okay? Generally speaking, the tighter the tolerance is, the more you're gonna pay for these things. Remember, the physical size of the resistor has nothing to do with its resistance value. Physical size gives you an indication of the power dissipation. So, for the same kind of construction, sort of um, axial res uh, resistors that you would have in a lab, the physically larger the resistor is, the greater the power handling. In a typical lab, you're look, probably looking at uh, quarter watt resistors, very typically. Okay, moving over to the higher precision, the four band. You know, what if we have something that looks like this? We'll use, oops, let's use the orange. So we'll say, ba, 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 ba. orange, blue, red, then brown. Okay, what is this? Okay, so. Orange is three, blue is five, red is two, brown is one. So it's three, five, two, with one zero, 10 to the first. In other words, it's three, five, two, zero, 3.52K, excuse me, yeah, that K. All right, okay, and that's the way that works. How do you remember this? Well, there's different techniques. Uh, a little mnemonic that you might use. So in other words, the first letter spells out a little sentence. One I like, I like to call it the Yogi Bear Picnic Mnemonic. So it goes out, black bears robbed our Yummy goodies, the picnic basket, beating the various, or voracious, your choice. Good wolves, poor wolves. I was getting a shirt under this type. So you can just remember the scheme, or like I said, just remember the whole idea of a rainbow here, if you know what the rainbow is. And the, the black and the white are at the extreme opposite ends, okay? I like to use black bears here just because it's black, all right, it's the first one, and then you kind of work your way down, okay? So that's basically the way this works. Uh, you just have to kind of practice with this. You do want to commit this to memory, right? Any good technician has to know this. Now, one other thing. If you have a surface mount resistor, right, one of those little square tiny little things you know like that big uh, they're not going to use colors what they will do is just print the number sequence on there so 
for this one, it would just say one, two, three, and then. In other words, you know it's a one, a two, and then 10 to the third. So it's 12K. And it would be the same kind of thing over here. All right. They're just too tiny. You're never going to see the colors. Of course, in lab, you know, when you're doing a lab, what you should do is to verify, take out your meter, take out your, your digital multimeter, and actually measure the resistance. Why do that? For accuracy. You know, if you grab this particular resistor, it's plus or minus 10%, right? So it can be anywhere between 3.2K and 10.8K. Well, chances are the meter that you have is probably, you know, one or two percent, even if it's not a you know high quality meter, it's probably going to be at least two percent in terms of um, its, its accuracy on R, on resistance. Of course, if you have a high quality meter, it'll probably be more like a tenth of a percent in accuracy. So now you could actually measure a value, and although you don't have a perfect value, you've really tied in much more tightly rather than having a value that's off by up to 10 percent. Now it's only off by whatever the accuracy of your DMM is. So the agreement between what theory predicts and what you actually measure is going to be that much closer, right? Remember, no meter is perfect. So you're never going to get the exact value from your ohm meter, just like you're never going to get the exact value from your volt measurement. But that can really help you out a lot, okay? So first step, make sure you have this oriented correctly, right? Don't have like the gold or silver band on this side. Have it oriented like this, then just read across. First two digits, like I said, this is the most common thing you're gonna see in lab. First two digits are the precision digits, then the next one is the number of zeros, 10 to the what? And then you have your tolerance band, okay? And then if it's a precision resistor, like I said, there's gonna be four of these. So, uh, three digits for precision, and then the last one is the power of 10. Okay? All right. See you next time.